Now, I call the honourable member, Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <laughs> I'm pleased to rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak to this bill, which is admittedly in its dying stages. And even though it is not a piece of legislation which New Zealand First has had the opportunity to make an input into, this is a shame, because if we had, we could perhaps have brought some common sense and a degree of sanity to what is yet another example of poorly thought through lawmaking on the part of this government. That's right. This is short-sighted legislation, misguided in its intentions and driven by a grasping mentality. And like much of this government's biosecurity agenda, it places too much reliance on unproven technology and questionable techniques at the expense of frontline officers with years of experience and actual boots on the ground. This bill has obviously not, has obviously not been regarded as a crucial piece of this government's agenda, coming through as it has from the 49th Parliament, rising and falling on the altar paper for most of the 50th, limping through finally to the stage where we're about to sign it off. Similarly to my Green colleague who spoke earlier, I confess I wrote the nuts and bolts of the speech uh, about two years ago, Mr Speaker, and I had to go back through it again to find out why we were opposed to it. I'm happy to report that our reasons are still sound. <laughs> In essence, Mr Speaker, hope so. New Zealand First does not really object to the government attempting to recover costs associated with screening passengers entering New Zealand for biosecurity and other risks through new and reopened airports through new and, and low volume ports of entry if these costs are materially over and above that which could normally be expected. We have some misgivings uh, that this approach picks on the little guy, that the provinces are marginalised by it, the smaller airports, the regional airports, yes, Palmerston North Airport, right. in the same way that this government appears to regard much of the heartland as an irritant and an encumbrance rather than the vitally important, indeed the essential core of New Zealand's agriculture and tour tourism based economy that it actually is. Perhaps, Mr Speaker, the National Party has forgotten its roots as part of the process of selling its soul to the free market economics of neoliberal ideology. But I digress, Mr Speaker, I digress just a little. We do not really object, as I say, to the government attempting to recover costs where costs have been incurred unreasonably or outside the scope of expected norms. We would question, however, how far the concept of user pays is destined to proceed while general taxation continues. Will there come a time, Mr Speaker, when every last dollar of government expenditure is matched by a direct recovery of cost in some form or another, and yet general taxation continues unabated alongside it? We would question also the government's rationale in claiming that it must recover costs from new airports and restarted airports and low-volume airports because operators of those airports are able to commence operations and to bring passengers into New Zealand and to expose New Zealand to potential biosecurity risks without regard to the cost that such operations will necessarily impose on the nation's border agencies, the Customs Service, MAF, the Aviation Security Service. MAF, that dates the speech, Mr Speaker. MAF no longer exists, it's now MPI. New Zealand First asks why, when it is the government itself which does, or at least which should, be licensing and approving the activation and operation of these newer and smaller airports. Why does government not take these costs into consideration when it is making the decision to allow any such new airport or point of entry to commence operations? Is this yet another case of deregulation and self-regulation of industry along the lines which we have seen with the likes of leaky buildings in Pike River? Even under these circumstances, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First is not expecting the passage of this bill through the House to be arrested by our protests regarding it. It is a fait accompli that this bill will pass into law because the government which is sponsoring it has the numbers necessary in order to make it happen. This we accept. And this is why we regret that we were not able to make input into its early stages. We are voting against it because in action it will serve to reinforce bad practice at the border, because it will make the government's current faulty direction in terms of biosecurity even worse. If government was intending in any way to focus its efforts on a regime of proper and effective biosecurity measures at the border, we would have less of an opposition to it. But Mr Speaker, it is becoming apparent that this government has no such intention. New Zealand's biosecurity is becoming less robust and more threatened at every turn. Officers at the border are demoralised and disenchanted by the direction in which government is heading with regards to the treatment of biosecurity risks. They are struggling to understand why the ultimate responsibility for New Zealand's safety and security should rest with them when at every level of authority and management above them such responsibility is being abdicated. There are insufficient dog teams available to service our ports of entry, Mr Speaker, and officers complain frequently and with genuine concern 
about chronic and unaddressed understaffing. These shortcomings are being made in favour of scanners, profiling and, most disturbingly, the smart gate, which, as any frequent traveller will attest, should be more accurately described as the dumb gate, given that it allows for the potential to admit all and any biosecurity risks without any recourse to interception or address at all. If this government's desire to recover the cost of biosecurity, I'm just looking up your patch, Mr. McKelvey. If this government's desire to recover the cost of biosecurity screening at the previously described ports of entry were to be used to provide for adequate screening methods and effective interception of unidentified risk factors, New Zealand First would be less opposed to them. But whilst this cynical money-grabbing exercise does disadvantage provincial areas in the way that it does and does not address New Zealand's actual and real biosecurity needs as it should, New Zealand First remains opposed to the bill. Thank you. I recognise the honourable member Colin King. It is a pleasure to uh, be part of the third reading of the airport's cost recovery processing of international travellers bill, and I would like the help.